Is the Ship John Wills jacket the best wax jacket in the world? Eh. If you found yourself at the Ship John Wills jacket product page, I could probably guess how you got there. You want a durable wax jacket that's built to last. The Filson tin cloth jackets have mixed reviews and they're moving their production over to Bangladesh. You want something unique, but even placing an order for this $500 plus jacket is a process in and of itself. And then, you know, there's the sizing. So what size do you choose? Trying to find one to try on is really difficult. So you're wondering if it's worth the time, the cost and the effort to get the Ship John Wills jacket. Ship John itself is a small shop out of Portland, Oregon, specializing in extremely high quality products with a price to match. And despite several requests for an interview or even a short blurb about the Ship John Wills jacket, Ship John's founder, Mike Elias, denied to offer any additional information, which is a shame because I really enjoy talking to small makers or people who are in charge of a small workshop. Then again, some people just don't like talking to Polish New Englanders, I guess. Now, it took me a few months, but ultimately I was able to order my own Ship John Wills jacket, so hopefully my experience can offer a good data point as to whether this is a good jacket for you or not. This is my Wills jacket in size large, and it was one of the special colors that they offered in 2021. The shell material is USA made 18 ounce twill, which is then 24 ounces when waxed. Now this is actually the same material used on the Heat Straps Chief Coat that I reviewed a while back, and it feels very much like the Filson Rugged Twill that I have on this original briefcase. In fact, Ship John originally made backpacks from this material back when they were called Tomahawk Portland. So it makes sense that they'd make a jacket from material that's already on hand. The zipper is a nice chunky brass number eight YKK, and the snaps feature custom milled brass caps with a leather washer between the stud and the eyelet. Though with material this thick, I'm not really sure that those are actually necessary. A couple of differences between my version that you see here and the new version two. The zipper is now a two-way, and they've lined the jacket and sleeves in nine ounce cotton herringbone material. These are two major upgrades and address some of the issues that I have with the original, so I give Ship John a lot of credit for refining their flagship product. The design of the Wills jacket is likely what makes it so appealing. A tweaked version of the typical work jacket, the Wills jacket is nicely laid out and functional. The lower pockets are an interesting design, being effective as both dump pockets and hand warmer pockets. You can keep small items in them without worrying about them falling out, and though they're unlined, they're comfortably positioned to put your hands in as well. The flapped chest pockets are a great symmetrical design, though the heavy waxed twill makes the flaps quite stiff. Now it's not problematic, but I like to keep a writing instrument in my pocket when I'm working, and these kind of tend to fight back. It's the reason I prefer one flapped pocket and one open pocket on my work jackets. Inside, you get a single open top pocket, which is made of thinner waxed material, though that pocket is undersized in my opinion. A deeper pocket, at least one deep enough to hold a smartphone would be great, as would a zippered pocket on the opposite side. There's a storm flap, which helps the weather resistance. And even while standing beneath a sprinkler for a full minute, the Wills jacket held up and didn't let any water through. It won't be a replacement for your rain gear, but at least if you get splashed with coolant or something, it'll keep you dry. With material this thick, the collar kind of does its own thing, and often you'll find the points going in completely opposite directions. This could easily be solved with a couple of hidden snaps, or if you have any of those sticky things that can hold your collar down, they could tame the dreaded bacon collar. The back is a gusseted by swing, allowing for flexibility which belies the heft of this thick material. The cuffs have snap closures, but only one position, so cinching them down is out of the question. But this kind of makes sense with the trim fit of the jacket, as we'll see. The fit is slim, which kind of blurs the intended use of the Wills jacket. As we've discussed before, workwear is clothing that's focused on function as its main priority, which is why it's typically generously cut to allow movement and layering. Rugged or heritage style clothing prioritizes fit and fashion above all else, so these garments don't usually work in physical labor jobs. Of course, there is some overlap, and that's where the Wills jacket seems to fit. The fit is trim, and I can't wear anything thicker than a flannel beneath it. The sleeves are especially trim, and if you have any bulk to you, this may be an area of concern. However, if you're slimmer and find yourself swimming in most workwear, then this jacket might be just what the doctor ordered. The fit reminds me a lot of the Patagonia Ranch Jacket, which is another excellent but trim work jacket. 
The origins of the Ship John Wills jacket help identify the intended use. Apparently, Mike Elias kept blowing through work jackets and created the Wills to solve that problem. So ostensibly, the Wills jacket is intended as workwear, and you could definitely use it as such. However, I don't know many guys who would ever do that. The price of $548 instantly puts it in a category which most blue collar workers wouldn't even consider. Workwear must walk a fine line between durability and price. Having worked with my hands for over 20 years, both in automotive and now in construction, there's no way I'd wear a $550 jacket on the job site when there are plenty of options out there for hundreds less, which perform just as well, like the heat straps chief coat for 350 bucks. Heck, I even get comments from guys who won't spend $100 on a work jacket. So the Wills jacket doesn't fit squarely in the workwear segment due to the price. I suspect that this jacket is more in line with the Filson crowd of people who like the durability and look of workwear, but want it to be more stylish and refined. In that situation, the Wills jacket is probably the best option I've seen so far, surpassing any Filson jacket that I've ever seen by a considerable margin. Ship John took the work jacket formula and refined every aspect of it from fit to hardware, creating a jacket which truly has no equal in its category. The ordering process is unlike anything I've ever seen, and to their credit, Ship John is working to make it easier. Currently, you need to be subscribed to the Ship John newsletter and keep an eye out for the date and time orders will open. Demand is so high that the Wills jackets tend to sell out within minutes. So if you're on a job site with limited access to the internet, you're probably out of luck. It took me a few tries. If you're at a computer all day long, it's just a matter of setting a reminder and having a quick reaction time with the mouse. If you're able to place an order, a $250 non-refundable deposit is required with the remaining balance plus shipping due upon completion. You do get a cool keychain with your order number on it, and it does seem that Ship John even has a sense of humor as to how clunky this process is. So is the Ship John Wills jacket the ultimate wax jacket? Well, it kind of depends. If you're the kind of guy who wants to do an engine swap on your truck and then meet some friends at the brewery afterwards and wear the same jacket to both, then maybe this is it for you. But if you're somebody who's looking for the ultimate answer to a workwear waxed jacket, I think there are better options out there. This is really kind of geared more towards the guys who want to look good, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that and also maybe do some work. But I think that most people, I mean, 75%, 90% even, of people who buy this jacket are buying it because it looks cool. You know, they like the durability and stuff. They're not actually gonna go to work in it. And if you have the money and this fits you well, I think it's a great option. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.